So if you've never heard of that sound as the world's waking up in the morning, I implore you to find the woods uh, early morning in the spring. Find yourself a tree to put your back on, hopefully on private property so you don't have to worry about other hunters, and just listen to the world wake up. Um, you're more than likely going to hear a shot gobble if you have turkeys in the area, and it's it's an incredible sound, especially when you don't realize that you're just a few trees away from a tom that's roosting. You were focused on another one, so it's pretty amazing. Today, I am going to be making a turkey fan mount. Um, my brother who shot a pheasant also shot his first turkey this year, so uh, we're getting after a new project. So it's going to start with some uh, corn crib wood. This is like 1 by 12 pine. Uh, it's very weathered, very old. It's got a good look. It's very rustic. And so I'm starting out with a circle and another piece that kind of looks like a mushroom. I just kind of made this uh, template up when I made my turkey mount. I looked and saw kind of what was common online. And it does mimic a little bit of like the way that a turkey looks in the end, you kind of see it. And so I'm just doing some cutting with my jigsaw, getting everything kind of rough cut and into shape, using my sander, get all my angles down. And then here I'm just kind of scribing out the area that is going to be cut out or recessed with my router for the feathers. And you can see I've got my hooks and spurs here. We're going to go ahead and notch these out with the router as well. And I kind of wish I had used the other one. You'll see later. I, I kind of make a mistake there. Uh, it's not at the right angle. And then here's the beard. So those are the main components that are going to be a part of this build. We've got feathers. We've got legs. And we've got a beard. So lots of weird stuff going together here. And so I'm just recessing and routing out this spot. For some reason, I do the one side at an angle. I'll have to fix that later. Uh, but the beard goes in just fine. Everything seems to fit. And then I get rid of this waist portion. So this is where I'll be gluing the feathers to. I know that you can spread out a fan and like staple it down and let it dry that way. Um, this one got sent to me through the mail and so it did not turn out that way. It was already kind of uh, fixed in place. And I had to do some surgery. You'll see it later in the video. I, I kind of uh, dissect the turkey feather fan. And uh, it works out though. And so we're going to add a little pre-stained conditioner on here because, again, this is kind of a pine uh, material, and my brother likes dark stain, and so, therefore, we're going to get the dark walnut from Minwax out. And we're going to darken this baby up. It looks really good, and it really pops. Uh, that's another thing. And you'll see uh, later I figure out that I forgot a step, and uh, I kind of think that it's going to be disastrous and actually ends up turning out to be a happy accident. I really like it. So we're going to add some shellac to protect this wood. And this is really actually a pretty quick build so long as everything goes together correctly. And we're just adding that shellac. Let it soak in. Look at it shine. So all that uh, character from the wood just like pops. And it's great. The rest of it gets sealed as well um, just to help from uh, expanding and contracting and bringing in moisture or getting rid of moisture. And so the whole thing gets a nice coating and it probably gets like uh, like four, probably four coats sanding in between each coat, kind of flatten it out. Nice light coats is what we're looking for. Same thing for this part. And I don't know why, but it, it, this part does look darker uh, than the other portion. It's from the same piece of wood, but a little bit further down the piece of wood. And so that's odd, I thought, in my opinion, but... But yeah, still turned out good. And so letting them dry and then moving on from there. And so here's the part that I told you I forgot about. I wanted to do a round over on the whole thing. And then I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to do a round over. I'm going to have to restain. And as soon as I did the round over, I was like, I like that. I like the way it looks. And so I said, we're just going to send it. Um, we are going to just resand, and we're going to recoat. We're going to get that natural color that's on here instead. And I think it tur turned out absolutely fantastic. Um, I really like that. I wish I had done that on uh, my my turkey fantail mount. Um, now that I've seen it, because it really does remind you of like a turkey turkey fan. 
um, especially on the, the cover plate part, not the part that's in my hand now, but the part that's sitting on the bench to my right. And so, yeah, it, uh, it makes it really pop and it makes the um, round over really stand out, the chamfer really stand out. And I think it looks good. So just add another coat here. And again, just a few more coats after this. I won't show all the coats, but that's kind of the idea of what I'm doing. Just get it all set. And I did end up having a little bit more of a problem with this piece for some reason. Uh, I don't know what it was. I don't know if I applied the shellac too thick at one point or what, but it seemed like any time I tried to hold this thing, even after like a week, um, my fingerprints were um, like impressing into the shellac. And so I must have done a coat somewhere too thick. Um, once it's on the wall, it doesn't really matter. It won't really, really have those kinds of issues. But at that time, it seemed like an issue. And so here's the dissection process. Uh, Floof tries to help out as much as he can. This could be a fun game. How many times do we see Floof? Because I think I knock him off the table like six or seven times. But yeah, I'm uh, trying to be careful um, as I cut these feathers. The uh, base portion of it, it had seen better days and it was a little smelly but I kept everything organized and that helped with the process. And so now it is arts and crafts time, boys and girls. A little hot glue, um, some spacer pieces, and I basically took the feathers and I, I ordered them from like biggest and frilliest to shortest. I also um, figured out that if they had an upswing um, on that side that meant like a right upswing meant they were on the right side and a left upswing meant they were on the left side because my fan mount is is actually one that was uh, spread out and stapled down and you'll see that kind of a little bit later and so I use that as a reference point for this build I at least had something to look off of that was a real example um, and so I didn't feel like I was completely flying blind even though I was a little stressed out about this activity and so we're just adding a little glue and we're overlapping um, each feather each time. And I'm, I'm doing a little pre-work just to make sure things are going to line up where I want them to. Um, this, uh, this one like actually made me sweat. Like it was kind of hot out in the, in the shop, but also like I was a little nervous about how it was going to turn out. Um, it was one of those deals where, I mean, you could always just rip it all off and start over, but nobody wants to do that. And uh, I don't claim to be a professional taxidermist. And so I know some of you guys will be like, that's not the right way to do it. And, and I get that. Um, I know that there's probably a thousand way better ways, but this one costs like zero dollars. And I think that's kind of cool. Plus, uh, it, it's, for, it's for my brother and he kind of likes my work. So, I mean, that's, that's fine with me. And uh, I don't know. I think end product looks pretty good. Uh, this, <laughs> this feather, I think, got shot by a BB. Um, that's why there's like a notch out of there and I, I didn't want to try to hide it. Um, I, I wanted to kind of celebrate it. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's one of those things where that's just the way it is. And so I'm just going to continue working my way through this uh, initial portion. Got to build it from the back to the front in order to get everything where it's supposed to go. And I do have a buddy who, who does this kind of stuff like for a living and or not for a living, but as a, a fun side hobby, I guess, and gets paid for it. And he said I wasn't too far off, and uh, and I'll take that as a hundred percent compliment. Not too far off is that's like where I'm looking for. That's that's the kind of ground I want to be covering. And so anyway, um, in the end, you can see it all comes together. You get that circular kind of pattern, and then I just double down on the glue. And so here I'm laying out these secondary feathers. I'm sure they have a specific name. I don't know what it is, um, so I'm going to call them secondary feathers. Primary feathers are the ones in the back. That's what I'm calling those. These are secondaries. Again, this is my lingo. Uh, it's probably not real, and that's okay. But yeah, we're just trying to line things up and make sure it looks semi, you know, pretty correct, I guess. And the process was actually pretty smooth. And one thing that's kind of cool, I will show you side by side my turkey that was shot in Iowa uh, versus my brother's turkey that was shot in Missouri. 
and you'll see like there's a substantial difference in color, especially on this uh, tertiary or third layer um, of feathers that you see here. The part towards the top of these feathers is kind of like a purplish, um, I don't know, purplish color shift or color phase. I don't even know how to really describe it. And uh, mine is more like green. And you'll see when I line those two things up, like you'll see that there's a, a lot of variation between them. I think that's super cool. Uh, but here I just uh, cut, I just drilled the holes um, that it's going to attach my cover plate to. And now we're going to zip off um, our turkey legs to the right height. And I was curious, like, how would the Milwaukee oscillating tool handle a turkey leg that's been drying for several weeks? And the answer is like a champ. Um, it went right through those things. And so Milwaukee, if you're looking for a turkey guy to uh, sponsor, your <laughs> to sponsor uh, I'm your guy. I'd like to keep zipping off turkey legs. That'd be great. And so I glued these babies in into the recesses. Everything uh, looked pretty good. Filling up the voids, added it on. That's kind of the finished product. And then here's a side-by-side -side of mine versus his. Mine is on the right. So you can see mine's more green. His is more of a purplish. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.